you know, he brings in a lot of the historical sources, but he tells it like a story. He doesn't tell it like a textbook. Right? And so it's really this, this moving story where he describes the apparition of Our Lady Guadalupe. And what Warren Carroll points out, and something that I really learned for the first time reading this book, was he talked about everything that had to take place leading up to the apparition of Our Lady Guadalupe. Oftentimes, when God works in the world, he doesn't just appear out of nowhere. There is a path that is prepared for him. We've been reading in Advent, we've been hearing from the prophecies of Isaiah, the most famous prophecy of Isaiah that John the Baptist echoed in his preaching. Prepare a way for the Lord. John the Baptist was preparing a way for Christ's ministry to begin. And throughout church history, when people are spreading the gospel, when they are spreading the faith, they are preparing the way for Christ to come into the hearts of the people in those cultures and places. And so Warren Carroll tells the story about the people who prepared the way for Christ to come in the Americas. He tells the story about how Hernan Cortez and his men and his missionaries arrived on the shores of Mexico. And they were terrified, they were horrified by what they found when they got there. They found a people very much possessed by evil, a people who practiced human sacrifice, a people who worshipped not just any old gods, they worshipped the gods of the darkness, the drinkers of blood. They said one of the names they gave to one of their gods that they worshipped was he who is on the shoulder, as in the one who is tempting and always leading you into evil. And so when the, when the Spaniards arrived, they didn't just see themselves as discovering a new land. They saw themselves as ambassadors for Christ, who had landed in this land of darkness, and they needed to bring the light of Christ. And again, if you read the story, you can hear about all the different, uh, basically, seemingly divine interventions that took place on their journey. The Spaniards were 300 soldiers. There were over 5 million people living in the Aztec Empire. Every soldier was outnumbered by about 10,000 to one. And yet they entered into the land. And what they found is actually a lot of the, the neighboring tribes, they actually joined up with them in their forces because those people had been victims to the Aztec Empire. The Aztec Empire, the Aztec religion, was founded on human sacrifice, and so they were always in need of new victims. And so the neighboring villages and tribes, they lived in fear of being captured and brought into the capital city. And so many of them actually joined up the Spaniards. And again, if you read this book, you read the story, you hear about the spiritual war that was taking place. That at one point in the conquest, the Spaniards, they were able to ascend to the tower where all of the human sacrifices take place. And they were able to plant an image of Our Lady and celebrate a mass. They considered it the great climax of the conquest. And of course, there's a lot of, you know, as with any war, with any violence, there was a lot of uh, confusion that took place. And in our, in our modern age, it's very common for historians to look back right, and basically criticize right, everything that happened in the past, right? but I would challenge any of those historians to put themselves in the shoes of those Spaniards. Any Spaniard who was in battle right, and was captured would be taken directly to the tower and he would be sacrificed to the world. It was very much a land of darkness and not just ignorance, but literally evil. They were worshiping the gods of the darkness and the drinkers of blood. And so when the Spaniards finally were able to take control, then they tried to spread the faith. And unfortunately, it didn't go very well for the first few years. And eventually, that was when Our Lady of Guadalupe finally appeared. And then all of a sudden, the floodgates were opened, and many people converted to the faith. But don't forget, the reason why she was able to appear is because there was a middle-aged man named Juan Diego who had been converted by those initial Spaniards. 
and missionaries. He was on his way to Mass, but Our Lady Guadalupe kept appearing to him. Mary did not just appear out of nowhere. The path was prepared for her. Through weak and sinful instruments, but instruments nonetheless. Preparing the way for the Lord, doing battle with the darkness. And of course, when Our Lady Guadalupe appeared, as you see in all the images of Our Lady, she's standing in front of the sun. The light is finally flooding out the darkness. A very important reflection for all of us to think about. We, we say when we describe the faith, we describe it as the light. That when Christ came into the world, he brought the light into the world. And yet many people still preferred darkness. That's what the Bible says. But he is the bringer of the light. And we must also be the bringers of the light. In our communities, in our families, in our workplaces, in our parishes, and especially in our own hearts. Ultimately, the Christian life is about spreading the faith. But in order to spread the light of the faith, we must first purge the darkness that can take root in each of us. On this Feast of Our Lady Guadalupe, it's very important for us not to just celebrate this great victory, but also to examine ourselves. What is the darkness inside of me? And where do I need to let the light of Christ Come in and purge me of that darkness. Just because we are mass goers or because we are church goers doesn't mean that darkness can still not completely take hold of us or of a place or of a parish. Pray that all of us on this feast of Our Lady Guadalupe would be inspired by the courage of those first people who came to prepare the way for the light, and that we might be inspired to do the same 